Hello and welcome to Queensland Weekender. Well, I don't know about you, but sometimes cooking for the family, night in, night out, can become a little boring. I mean, how many versions of spaghetti bolognese are there? So I've decided it's time to expand my repertoire and reignite my passion for cooking, and I've chosen a rather special spot to do it. But I'll tell you about it a little later on. For now, let's see what the rest of the team are up to. Saddle up for a horse ride in the Lockyer Valley. Good boy. Look at that, like a pro. We meet a lucky lady who calls paradise home. It just makes everything worthwhile and that's why that's why I do what I do. I just love it. It's a passion. We drop by a Sunshine Coast hidden gem. It's a little town with a lot going on. First up, let's join Bridget. Ask any Toowoomba local what springtime means to them and chances are their response will be Carnival of Flowers time. And each year it's the main parade that draws the crowds. When it comes to floats at the Toowoomba Carnival of Flowers main parade, they just seem to get bigger and better every year. And that's because each year attracts more and more entries. Currently more than 50 floats and 1,200 people are involved. And one of the entrants, Wendy Skeen, has many fond childhood memories of the parade. I've actually done carnivals since I was a little girl. My grandparents lived in Toowoomba and the floats just floated down the street. So when I started my business, like, let's do it, because Toowoomba this year, it's just like every year it smells beautiful, all this happening, it's just cars, floats, <laughs> flowers, it's just exciting. It is and exciting. And to have a float and be able to do what I saw when I was a little girl, to spread magic for other people, um, Toowoomba's just awesome. Yeah, is it a dream it come beautiful. true? It is a dream come true. More than 100,000 people line the streets and soak in the sights, sounds and smells of the famous floats. And the floats really are nothing short of spectacular. Many entrants have been working tirelessly in the days and weeks leading up to the event, just like Joy Halen. It's a lot of hours, hundreds and hundreds of hours of creating floats, designing them, building them. We couldn't have asked for better weather for the performance, so we're excited, we're excited. A little bit of jittery nerves with these gorgeous there's girls. There's always nerves, there's always nerves. You just want everything to stay intact, including our performers. Um, it's very exciting. As the parade draws to a close for another year, some may find themselves feeling a little sad it's all over. But if that's the case, never fear. At the end of the main parade, they sell off most of the flowers from the floats, which means carnival goers can take a little piece of the carnival home for themselves. <laughs> It's just another reason to put a smile on your face. And it would appear the Williamson family agrees. This looks like a family affair. Yes, it is. And over the last couple of years, I dragged them along with me so that they can help me out. But hang on a minute. You guys have got the most flowers I've seen of everyone. Have you got about 500 little flower pots here? Probably close to it. Not as many as what we've had in past years. Because it's so dry, we've decided we'll scale back a bit this year. Oh, this is scaling back? Yes, yeah. yeah. OK, so what's the, how does it go? You come every year to watch the parade or just get the flowers? No, we come and watch the parade and then we go crazy in the flowers afterwards. No, OK. The main parade marks the start of the 10-day spectacular that is the Toowoomba Carnival of Flowers. So whether you're keen to be a participant or a spectator, make sure you mark the start of September in your calendar for a trip up the range in 2018. Now I haven't been on a horse for 20 years and after the break I'm going for a country ride. I did ask for a small horse, but this one's ridiculous, Caroline. No, Kip, this one's your horse. Oh, upgrade. I like it. It's been about 20 years since the last time I rode a horse, and that didn't end well. It ended up with me on the ground, the horse bolting, but you know what they say, straight back in the saddle. Or in my case, 20 years later, back in the saddle. But I've got a feeling today is going to end up a little better. For a start, I'm in the hands of Shane Nash, a man who couldn't be more relaxed with a horse if he tried. 
Nice and easy now. Nice and easy. Good. Shane and his wife Carolyn run Nash Horse Trekking in the Lockyer Valley. They offer a range of experiences, including a refresher course for nervous riders. Shane, who have we got here, mate? Mate, this is Dusty. He's a 10-year-old um, Australian stock horse. For me, as a bit of a nervous rider and someone's had a bad experience, what do I do to sort of get my confidence back yeah. before I even get on? Well, the best thing to do is just to start from the beginning again. Right. You know, and that's um, simply approaching the horse, come up close to his face, and then just show the back of your hand up underneath his nostril. Oh, yeah, like a dog, let, let him have a sniff. Yeah, let yeah. him have a sniff, and he'll register your scent and remember who you are. Yeah. And Ready. Yeah, and it relaxes him. Now we want you to familiarise yourself with Dusty. Yeah. Um, one of the ways to do that is that when he was born, his mum used to lick him along the neck. I don't want to lick him. You don't want to lick him? <laughs> Not really. He tastes nice and salty. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> good, yeah. Is there yeah. some other way? <laughs> yeah, there is another way. Yeah. And what you do is you, you just rub your hand down along the um, top of his neck there. Okay, so not like a pat? No, no, patting is sort of like a, a mild form of pity. Ah. You can tell Shane has a bond with his horses. Something of a man from Snowy River vibe. I did hear that you uh, used to catch brumbies back in the day? Well, I used to chase brumbies. I didn't do much catching. No, yeah, really? Yeah. 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 yeah, we used to go up into the um, Snowy Mountains. Yeah, right. And um, run wild horses up there. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, once you've done that, the adrenaline, oh. uh, it's just extreme. Yeah. Well, my adrenaline is pumping because it's time for Dusty and me to get a little closer. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, right. on, yeah. You got a bit stuck there. Mate. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Not exactly graceful, but I'm up. So far, so good. I reckon a few more tips from Shane. Walk on, mate. Walk on, mate. A nice command. I think I'm getting the hang of it. And I'll be ready to graduate from the round yard to the open trail. Nash Horse Trekking offers a variety of trail rides, including one that ends at a country pub. Now, that's what I call incentive to stay upright at the saddle. So we're going to head up to that little track there. Carolyn Nash is our guide. Do a little bit of bush bashing along our way. Yeah, OK. <laughs> like Shane, she's right at home on a horse, and that's reassuring for the rest of us. I would say about 80% of our customers sort of don't ride horses too much, but we try and keep it real, yep. um, keep it relaxed. We don't do the nose to tail type. Yeah. We'd like people to really experience riding a horse and what it's like. Cool old bridge. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Yeah. Imagine trying to build that. Yeah. Hooey! Yeah. The path we're taking has its share of history. Iron horses once rode this same track. Caroline, this has been a, a beautiful ride. What do you call this trail? This is the Brisbane Valley Rail Trail. Yep. It runs from Woolcaraka near Ipswich up to Yarraman, which is roughly about 160 kilometres. And it's only now used for horse riding, for push bikes and for walkers. Clearly it used to be a railway line. Sure did. We've got <laughs> the beautiful old bridge. I think it's over 100 years old. Wow. Uh, and there's lots of bits and pieces along the trail that you can see how things used to be. One of those railway relics is Little Kuminya Station. It signals that we're nearing our destination. Just a clip-clop across the road and we've arrived at the Bellevue Hotel, a welcome sight after two hours on the trail. Well, the good news is I stayed on. The other bit of good news is it's time for a pub lunch and I could eat a horse. Not you though, mate. Like most country pubs, Kuminya's locals serves up generous meals, including a steak sanger I doubt even Dusty could jump over. And lunch is included in the cost of the trail ride. Nice. Nash Horse Trekking offers great riding experiences in the Lockyer Valley, about 70 minutes drive from Brisbane. For nervous Nellies or first timers, Shane and Caroline's one hour introduction to horses is a winner. And then you can work your way up to a five hour country pub ride. support something a little different. The CUA School Fun Run is a fantastic program that brings students and communities together to raise much needed funds for our schools. And right now, events are happening across Queensland at a school near you. 
Last year, the scheme raised more than $3.6 million for schools involved. Impressive. So if you want your kids to be part of a happy, healthy generation and give their education a positive boost, then sprint to the CUA School Fun Run website to find out more, including how to get your school involved. As far as Sunshine Coast towns go, this might not be part of the obvious top five, but after the break, I'm going to tell you what's to love about Karoi. My name's Nancy Lowe and um, I own Mission Beach Dunk Island Water Taxi and Mission Beach Dive here in beautiful Mission Beach, far north Queensland, right in between Cairns and Townsville. This is our little paradise here. The area itself is just the most remarkable area as far as beauty goes. We've got tropical islands, beautiful beaches, really laid back. I've been here a long time and I've seen it grow and I've seen it, you know, turn into what it is today, which is just, it's just paradise. Mission Beach to me is so special because it is a little bit different. It is off the beaten track. People who want a quieter, less active sort of place to go, it's a little bit less known and that's what makes it really, really special. It's quiet seaside, sleepy seaside village. It's beautiful. West of the golden beaches of the northern end of the Sunshine Coast are half a dozen towns that are worth exploring. One of them is Karoi. A century ago, the timber and dairy industry supported everyone who lived here. These days it's attractive to people who want to be close by to everything that the coast offers while living life at a slower pace. But don't take that from me, let's ask around. Roy Kell came here 16 years ago, having spent most of his adult life in major cities. When you drive into Croy, there's this big sign that greets you that says, the heart of the hinterland. Tell me about the vibe in the heart of the hinterland. You've got Noosa about 20 minutes that way. You've got Umundi six minutes that way. But for me, I think it's the people. Because when you walk down the street of Croy, people know you. When you go into the shop, you know the person who's serving you. You know Laurie in the news agency. You know Betty who serves you the bread. It's just that sort of country town. And there must be some characters in town when I was driving along. I think it's at the RSL. I saw a sign out that front that says, before I die, and everyone's writing ideas underneath yeah. it. So people just come along and put their dreams <laughs> up on there. There's very much that sort of um, country sense of humour here. It's, uh, it's quite a special place, really. Now, the hospitality scene here is getting a name for itself because yes. word on the street in Noosa is there's some very good coffee shops. This is so Melbourne or inner city Absolutely. to have a hole in the wall coffee this shop. This could be in Flinders Lane in Melbourne. Yeah. It's that style of thing, you know. There's a couple of boys there just going flat chat making really, really good coffees. Every town needs a good cup of yeah, coffee. Yeah, they certainly <laughs> do, yeah. One of the surprising finds is that the town supports five op shops. Justine Hodges is at Bloom Hills. So people actually come to Croy to op shop? Yes, they do. They, they have a whole day of it and it's a wonderful experience. I mean, why pay full price when you can come and get designer labels? Very, very affordable prices. And you're not only helping recycle, but you're helping a charity and it all stays on the coast. The clothes, the shoes and bric-a-brac comes from local donations. I get the sense there's a very strong community spirit in this town. Well, there is. Everyone knows everyone and everyone tries to help everyone and it's just an old-fashioned town with good values. The Butter Factory Arts Centre is a favourite meeting place and on Fridays, local potters have access to this great space. Pam Walsh's latest projects have a bird theme. Why do you think Croy is becoming the talk of the Sunshine Coast? I love the sense of community that we're building here. It's, it's taken a while because we were an outer suburb of Noosa once, but now we're starting to get our own community and I believe the art is, is a very important part of that. Mm -hmm. 
And there are more creative people just down the street. John Geiger is one of the woodworkers honouring the town's timber heritage at the Karura Woodworkers Club. They are set up in the drying kilns of the decommissioned mill. I was looking for something to do with my hands. I was newly retired. Felt as if, you know, you use your head for all of your life. You retire and you start to get bored. I want to do some woodwork. Why not? You must get a real satisfaction from being creative with your hands. Oh, look, to turn a bit of wood like that into a nice box that you can give away as a present is a real buzz. This would be a little boy's dream, or a little girl's. Or, but a, or a big boy's dream. Or a big boy's dream. <laughs> There's a lot going on in Karoi, and they're a very welcoming bunch. A cooking school where the view is just as enticing as the meals we're preparing. Come for a taste after the break. Cooking's one of those things that can become a bit of a chore, especially when you throw children and the general craziness of life into the mix. Somewhere along the way, the passion for preparing meals has fizzled just slightly, so I thought it's time to reignite the flame. Apron at the ready. I'm hoping to pick up a few tips along the way. I've signed up for a class with Wild Lime Cooking School, set in the heart of the scenic rim. It's about an hour and a half drive south of Brisbane, a perfect spot for a gourmet getaway. So today we're going to make a really simple but beautiful ricotta gnocchi. When Kate Raymond isn't running her deli, the vintage pickle on Tambourine Mountain, she's sharing her love and knowledge of cooking with others. The less time you spend shaping it, the lighter it's going to be. And then use our fork to just mark them. So that helps your sauce stick to the gnocchi. I had no idea that's why you put the fork in, for yeah. the sauce to stick. Yeah. Yeah, but it was decorative too. I did say I was hoping to pick up a few tips. It's not just gnocchi we're whipping up today. There's plenty more to do, so it's all hands on deck. Kate, it's good you're keeping everyone very busy because otherwise you could quite easily get distracted by this view. Oh yes, it's a tough workplace. <laughs> <laughs> but a wonderful place to bring people to. They're experiencing the scenic rim, but they're really experiencing it with their mouth as well. Yeah, that's right. Being able to try so many different products from the scenic rem in, in one cooking school, it's really quite special. The milk from just down the road, the cheese obviously from just down the road as well. And you're not just teaching us about how to cook a certain recipe, it's more than that, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's about, you know, learning how to combine different flavours, you know, and some different things that will go together, obviously with our lemon myrtle and ginger, all those kind of things that you may, may have been a little bit hesitant to try at home. Under Kate's supervision, it's easy to master these tricky meals like the dreaded souffle. So the idea with your bechamel is it needs to be thick. So the same with your egg whites need to be stiffly beaten. So you have that stability in your souffle so that it doesn't then sink once you've pulled it back out of the oven. The disaster which is, bit. <laughs> yeah, which is everyone's souffle disaster, isn't it? I'm quietly confident that this souffle will be A-OK. -okay. Enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> well, the cooking was good. Something tells me the eating might be even better. Oh, wow. All that hard work, right? Definitely not a disaster souffle. A long lunch isn't complete without a siesta to cap off the afternoon. And lucky for guests, a comfy bed isn't too far away. Nathan and Jodie Overell own Wild Lime Cooking School and Warendo Cottages. Nice. The experience out here really begins with the meal, doesn't it? Well, well, that's a big part of it, yeah. If, if, if you come for our cooking school, then it's, it's a great way for like-minded, foodie-oriented people to spend some lovely time together. And we find so often that people really click and by the end of the class, you know, they're, they're getting on like a house on fire. Because cooking at home can be kind of lonely sometimes, whereas if you're in a group, it's that real shared experience. That's right, it takes it away from that weekday chore to something with a bit more passion and a bit more involvement. And of course, then coming and spending time at the cottages and out in your property is another extension of really just taking some time for yourself. Well, I think it's really important these days. We all live really busy lives, even out here, so taking a weekend out to enjoy some great food and good company is, is good for the soul. 
There are three self-catered cottages to choose from, all with breathtaking mountain views. Whether you're a large group or you're just enjoying a couple's getaway, you'll easily make yourself at home at Warendo. You can also book yourself in at Wildlife Cooking School by visiting the website. More weekend ideas can be found on our website. You can also keep up with our travels on Facebook and Instagram. Queensland.com and the Queensland Rail Travel websites are also worth a look. Well, that's all we have time for. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your Saturday afternoon with us. I hope we've given you a few tips and some inspiration to get out and about, or maybe just take some time out. The team from Queensland Weekend are back with you next weekend. Bye-bye.